I'm just going to share briefly here as they go to class. So if you're, um, how old, uh, Fanny, are we taking from 12, 12 to 3 to 12? 3 to 12. So if you're 3 to 12 years old, please make your way back there. Amen. So today, I want to ask you a few questions. I, I normally don't ask a whole lot of questions, but today I'm going to ask some. Because I want to know, are you about lip service or are you the real deal? That's the question I have for you. Are you about lip service or are you, you the real deal? Are you all talk and no action? Come on, let's be. Can I just ask some tough questions? Are you all talk but no action? Are you as flaky as that paint on that old 64 Plymouth on your neighborhood street? Flaky. Are you that way? I know, brother, that when you were talking with them, they made so many promises when you're talking to them. They made so many things that they said so many things, and you're like, bro, can't, I mean, are you going to be able to keep those promises? They, but they talk about how much they can help you. They make these statements, but... And then you come back and you, you re-engage with them and talk about them and talk about, well, you said you were going to do X, Y, and Z. And they don't even have a clue what you're saying because they're all about lip service. Lip service. And um, they were just beating their gums. That's what I like to say. Do you beat their gums? Let me ask you another question. Are you one who beats their gums or do you have substance to back up what you say? Are you one that... All talk, no action. Um, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. I want to read to you what it says. Verse 13. And it says, the Lord says, These people came near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that they have been taught. Now, here's what's crazy about this scripture, is that if we go to the New Testament, Jesus actually refers back to this. Turn with me to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And we can see that Jesus refers back to what Isaiah said in the chapter we just read, Isaiah 29. He said, this is Jesus talking, Mark chapter 7, verse 9, if you're there. I mean, verse 6. He said, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it was written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are mere, merely human rules. Now, Jesus was referring to back what Isaiah was saying. And, but I want you guys to examine your own life and your heart. Um, are you one that just honors God with your lips, but your heart is far from honoring him? You say all the right things. You look like all the right things. You play the part. You look the part. But it's all for show. Because I've known folk that they look like all polished on the outside. They look like they got it all together. You know, they get their teeth whitened and all that. You know, nothing wrong with that, but you know. They look, you know, they're smiling. You see glistening when they're smiling at the light. Because they're, you know what I mean? Their hair is done all right and they look right. But then you talk to them in there and they say all the right things. Praise the Lord, brother. You know, hey, I've been in ministry, woo-woo, and this and this. And, and they say all the right things. They, they look the part. They, they talk the part. But... It's all lip service because you find out really about them. You find out really what's going on, and they're, and they're just not who they present themselves to be or how they want people to perceive them, right? We all want to be perceived like healthy and, and, and solid and, and good people. We all want that, right? There's nothing wrong with, with wanting to, um, to be 
uh, I don't know what the word is, but just to, just to be solid people. We all want that. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's when you're fake, when you're flaky, when you're, when you, it's just all lip service stuff. That's, that's when it becomes a problem. You know what I mean? You drive the nice car, but you're so far in debt. Let's be real. You have the nicest house, but, you know, your, your, marriage, your, your family and your life is all tore apart. You play the part, but, but it's a lot lip service. So, you know, it's all for show. I've talked about picking fruits. You know, I hate when I pick a fruit and it looks, it has all the earmarks like a good fruit, but you cut it open, you eat it, and it's bitter or it's not sweet or it's dry or it's too crunchy. You know what I mean? I like it when I pick a fruit and it's just spot on and it's juicy and it's sweet. Don't, don't we all? Well, that's the same thing with people. I love it when someone is solid by you talking to them, looking at them, but then really they're solid in their lives. They have good roots, good fruits. I love it. I love it when it's like that. I love that, that situation because, um, because we need believers. We need people around us that are like that. We need people that, that are not just about lip service, not about just beating their gums. I used to have a, a bully at, at, at school when I was in elementary Maybe none of you experienced this, but they were bullied. They were bigger than everybody, you know. And when they wanted the kickball, they got the kickball because they would bully everybody. But one time I, 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 was, I had enough, and I stood up to the bully, and I found out that the bully was all lip service because they didn't want to go down, right? They didn't want to throw down, even though I thought they were going to kick my butt. But... I found out they were just beating their gums. They were just lip service. And, um, but the reason why Jesus, uh, he, the reason why he made this statement, he was making it to the Pharisees. And um, all this went down because the disciples, they were eating without washing their hands. You could find it later, look at it, it's Matthew 7. But uh, verse 1, we're reading a little bit later, but um, in Matthew 7, you could see that the disciples were starting to eat and they didn't wash their hands. And the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders of the day, they were ticked off. They were acting confused because they were saying, hold on, you're supposed to be the new religious leader, Jesus, and your disciples, but yet you're not following the laws and practices that we've set before you. You're supposed to go wash your utensils, wash your fruit, wash your hands before you start eating. But instead, the disciples, man, they were just like, man, we're hungry. Let's grub. And they didn't follow that procedure. And the Pharisees were upset about it. They were mad about it. They were like, hold on, hold on. Why aren't you following, following the rules? And that's when Jesus said what he said. We read his response. He, he was telling the Pharisees, look. You guys honor me with your lips, but you're just beating your gums because your heart is far from me. See, just because folk go to church and act like they all that and all God and religious doesn't mean so. Doesn't mean that they have a strong relationship with the Lord. I grew up in a neighborhood that um, was... My whole block went to the same church. Uh, anybody that went to church or any, uh, let me say it this way. All the friends I hung out with, all their parents went to this one church behind our house, behind our neighborhood. And, um, and it was crazy because I didn't have a relationship with God at the time. I didn't know God. I've told you guys this before. We were the black sheep of the neighborhood. They, my friends... All with that their parents went to church, were not allowed to hang out with us. Now, part of me understands that because we were a drug-infested house. We were the house that, you know, would party and woo-woo-woo. So part of me realized that. But they, real, they knew I was their son and daughter's friends, or son's friends. And yet, I wasn't allowed to go to their house, nor were they allowed to come to my house. It was a thing that their parents set up. Now, I, now that I think about that, how awesome would it have been if they reached out to me and said, look, 
you know, we don't approve of your lifestyle or what, whatnot, but man, would, would you come to church with us? Or I remember them talking about summer camps as a young, you know, for youth summer camps. And I remember that they would, I, I would be in, engaged with them in conversation with my friends, and they're all talking about the summer camp. And they're talking about they're going to do this and go swimming and this and that. And I was like, God, I wish I can go. You know, I wish I could be part of that. But their parents wouldn't allow them to invite me or their kids knew that already. So they wouldn't even dare invite me. But how, how awesome would it have been if they would have just invited me? Now, let me tell you something. Perhaps on Sunday they were religious. They were woo-woo-woo and this and this. But Monday through Saturday, you couldn't tell. I'm talking about their parents, their family. You couldn't tell. There was no light in that house that, that I can tell. You know, and so, um, so I always remember that, that folk, even though they go to church, even though they, they're involved, they went to different marriage classes. I remember that. But when I would go to their house, or if at times, a couple times, I would be able to go to their house, uh, they, they, there was no religious or uh, godly uh, presence I could sense from them. None whatsoever. And so um, we talk, we'll talk more about this in a moment, about how, God, how people honor with their lips but not with their heart. But I want you to know that it is important. Let me, let me just divert for a second because I, I want to talk about this. It, it has a, a somewhat to do with our text, but a little bit, I want to divert a little bit because it's very important to be a man and woman of your word. Because a lot of times, like I ask the questions, if you beat your gums and you're about lip service, and I said that if you're as flaky as that paint job on that 56 Plymouth on the side of your street, whatever, because many of you are, let me, let me take that back, not many of you, but there are some that are flaky. You're flaky, oh man, I got quiet up in here, hopefully I'm not. <laughs> It is important to be a man or woman of your word. The Bible says in Matthew 5.37, don't turn there, but it says, let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. When you tell someone you're going to do something, do it. If you tell someone you're not going to do something, don't do it. Be a man or a woman of your word. It is so important if you're going to do something, you tell someone you're going to do something, then do it. If you tell them you're going to meet them at Starbucks, meet them at Starbucks. If you tell them you're going to do fix their car, fix their car. Don't leave them hanging. Don't be flaky. Don't be one that says beat your gums and you're all about lip service. Stop over-promising and under-delivering. You know what I'm saying? Some of you overpromise, woo, 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 and then you come way down here. Come on. We, we've got to maybe underpromise and overdeliver. Amen? We got to be people of integrity. We've got to be men and women of our word. I mean, back in the day, my word is my bond. You remember? We don't need contracts. Let's just shake on it. Those days are gone. You better get a contract that's approved by a lawyer if you're getting in business with somebody. Because that, that is, my word is my bond. Uh, yeah. But let me get this contract that my lawyer drafted up. Because those things are, are, are not so common anymore. But walk the talk. Stop talking and back it up. If you commit to, stay, uh, to something, stay faithful and press through that commitment. Follow through. I rem let me just give you an example, okay? There was a, the district needed help with computers, tra computer training. I said, you know what, I, I could do computers. I could write up a curriculum, woo, 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 right? So I committed, and I said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the training X, Y, and Z. So we figured four weeks <coughs> of training for uh, one day a week, right? So four times. And so I was like, oh, I got this. I, I can do this. So I, I developed the curriculum. Uh, did all that. I put a lot of work into it, and they're pumping it up. Oh, we're going to invite the whole district and this and this and yada, yada, yada. And, and I'm not begging on them because 
someone from there could be watching by video. Uh, so I'm not begging on them. I'm just saying what was told to me, boom, 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 we'll have X amount, you know, prepare X amount and this and this. So I get there and there's like four people. And we have a classroom designed ready for like 50 and there's four. So I'm like, wow, okay, well, I, you know what I did, guys? I gave it my all as though there was a thousand people there. I taught them the best that I could. And this is during the time of the San Francisco Giants being in the World Series. I'm a Giants fan. And for whatever reason, every night that we had it, it was either a playoff game or the World Series. I'm not kidding you. And I'm like going to the thing, shake. I have the shakes, you know what I mean? I'm like going to the thing, oh my gosh, I'm missing. No, I wasn't that bad. I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit. But, but it was four people. The next week was two. And you know what? Let me tell you something. There was a World Series on, but I would not flake out on those three people. I could have said, you know, guys, their turnout wasn't good. And there's two people here that can vouch for me. They were there. And I could, and, and they probably, I never mentioned the World Series. I never mentioned the Giants while I was there. Did I? I don't think so. But I, I, I mean, I wish I could have had it on my phone while I'm teaching, you know, but I did it. But, um, but I didn't flake out because I'm committed. I said, I gave them my word, and I'm going to stick to it. And, and I think there was one week there was one. And there was a World Series on, and I kept on going, and I kept, and I gave it the best. With that one person, I gave it the best that I could. I am telling you, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not trying to pump my up, myself up. I'm just trying to tell you that it's important to give your word and be a man or a woman of your word. I didn't let the amount of people or the disappointment of so little people dictate to how I was going to present this, to how much I was going to. You know why? Because God's going to honor what I'm going to do. My reward is with the Lord, not with people. And I was teaching unto the Lord. And as I teach unto the Lord, he will give me the reward. He will bless me. And I don't, see, I don't, I don't look to those people to bless. I did this all for volunteer. I didn't get paid. It wasn't a paid position. Obviously, if you're paid, you have to be there. But you have to have that same attitude and heart even if you're not paid. You got to, if you volunteer for church, don't come disgruntled. Don't come all mad. Well, uh, but I got to, you give it all your heart. You're doing it unto the Lord. Be committed. Be a man or woman of your word. Stop being flaky. Amen. And I promise you guys, I'm not thinking of one person when I say this. So don't think, oh, he's talking about, I don't, I'm just, just sharing you general principles. Some of you are like, dang, I'm going to walk out all offended because pastor's talking about me. The Holy Spirit may be talking to you, not me. Throwing you under the bus. Throwing you under the bus. Just stop talking if you're not going to back it up. Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. Amen? Amen? Don't be flaky. Be solid. Be someone you can depend on. You know those people you can't depend on. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. You be the committed. Stay faithful and press through. Follow through. Now, let me go even a little bit deeper in this, uh, if I could you under the bus a little bit more be on time you know what I mean some of you live on the LPT time the Latino Pacific time <laughs> supposed to be there at, at 10 30 you here at 10 40 no I'm not talking about church I'm, you're supposed to be at work at 8 come on you get there at 8 10 the LPT time or the minority time, whatever. Be on time. You know what? Be early. Get in the habit of going early. You know what? Get in the habit of <clears throat> being the first one there and the last one to leave. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is important stuff right here. I, I remember I was uh, working at, in corporate America in Silicon Valley, San Jose. California, I was, I was working for a huge corporation. I was one of the, I was the top salesman in the region, meaning California, Oregon, Washington, um, Nevada, 
Texas, or so on, just the West Coast, basically. I, I, I was the number one. Now, not the whole year, but part of the year, I was number one in all of the region. So everybody, I'm trying, I'm, I sound like I'm bragging, but, you know, just everybody knew the, the, the blessing that God had given me to be in that position, right? So let me tell you something. I remember one time I was in my cubicle about 7.30 or so. We, we, I was called the major account executive, so I could come in whenever I want, basically, and especially with my success. I, I don't even have to come in. I could just, you know, do whatever, and just, as long as I keep on producing numbers, I could do whatever. So I remember that was about 7, you know, early, almost 7.30, maybe a little bit earlier. And, and I was in my cubicle. I was the only one in the building or in our, our floor. And, um, and I remember that I heard two people talking, and it was the vice president of our corporation, which is a, it was a MCI. Remember that? MCI WorldCom. Huge corporation. I mean, I think the headquarters is in Mississippi or something like that. The vice president of the corporation and our regional uh, guy, they were together. And, uh, and no one's in the building, and they come to my cubicle. Ah, Gilbert, because my name's on there. Now I know why you, you're successful. Now I know why you're, you're because here I am, the top sales guy, but yet I was in there early before everybody else. Now, you, you're, I'm just sharing a principle here. I'm just sharing a principle. Some of you are so comfortable with your work, you show up whenever you show up. We got to be, be people of integrity and be people that are on time. Start being on time. I hate being late. I hate being late. I hate, if others want to be late, so be it. But for me, I hate being late. I like to be on time. I like to be there punctually. I like to be prepared. I like to, to have things organized and, and, and uh, you know, to the best of my ability. It's not, I'm not all the time like that. I'm sometimes late occasionally. I'm sometimes flaky. I, I'm not perfect, but I, for the most part, I try my best. I try to be on time. I try to be the man of my word. I never, try, you know, especially if I give you something that's big, like I'll marry you or I'll dedicate your children or I'll be there on Sunday. Because what if just one Sunday, I just didn't want to show up? Or if I showed up, I showed up right about now. And you guys would be like, what the heck? But I'm not going to do that, right? I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be a man of my word. You need to be, just because I'm pastor doesn't mean I'm the only one that's supposed to have, be a man of my word. You're supposed to be on time. You're supposed to be a man and woman of your word as well. Amen? All right. All right. I'm just, let me just <laughs> be a rock or a pillar of dependability. Be the rock of your family. Be dependable. Be the dependable one in your family. Be the one that people could depend on. You know, I mean, when I tell, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be my mom. It could be a stranger. It could be my boss. It could be my wife. It could be my children. When I tell them something, I do my best to follow through. Now, I've promised my kids a few vacations that never fruition. <laughs> and I hate that. My wife reminded me, well, you told them you were going to take them to Disneyland. I don't have the $1,000. I can't take them. You know what I mean? It's like, Relax. I, and so I don't, I do my best not to promise them to do that. I, I, so now, when I want to take them somewhere, I'll say, okay, now, if we have the finances, or if everything A, B, and C works out, we'll do this. But, you know, I, so I set it up, so I'm not like, hey, bro, you know, I'm going to take you to Hawaii and, you know, with no dollars in my bank account. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be uh, dependable to even my children, or more importantly, especially to my children. You know, you know what I'm saying? Especially. Jesus felt that the Pharisees were just shooting from the hip to the lip. They were just shooting. Um, they, weren't, they weren't about the heart of the Lord. They didn't have the heart of the Lord. And this, again, reminds me of a lot of the people I grew up with around the church. I talked to you about my friends at, in my neighborhood where... I felt the parents were just shooting from the hip to the lip and not having a real heart, a genuine heart for the Lord. And uh, they talked a Jesus game. They talked as though they cared, 
But when it came right down to it, they were just beating their gums. And I can't judge their heart. I don't know where their heart was, but I, I'm telling you just by what I can observe and see that it, their words didn't line up with their actions. I mean, let's be real. You're here praising the Lord with us. Ooh. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, you're all Christian, smiling. And you go out there, someone cuts you off, and you're giving them the bird. Come on, let's, can, can I just, can I be real for a second? Can I just be real for a second? I love the Lord, and <laughs> flipping the bird. <laughs> Some of you are laughing because you, you're probably the ones that are doing it. No, I just, I just, you identify with what I'm saying, amen. But do your actions line up with the serve, with, with what you do? Do, you, do your actions line up with what you're saying? Like a politician, they talk good game, but many times they're just saying things to please the voters. Um, are you like the parent that makes the rules only to routinely break them? Again, just being man and woman of a word. And, um, <laughs> and then especially now that we have bumper stickers on our car, and our, you know, we got River of Life bumper stickers, and you're putting them on your car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Take that sticker off, you're going to be birding everybody out. You know what I mean? Don't do it. <laughs> I'm sure many of you know this already, but let me, if you don't know this, let me say that. Or actually, everybody say actions. Action. Speak Speak. Louder, louder than words. Louder. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Your actions, our actions speak louder than the words. See, the Pharisees, they, they, they present it like they had it all together. They had a facade that everybody considered them the religious leaders. Everybody felt that they were uh, or should be, and the government even recognized them as the religious leaders of the day. But it was all flake. It was all fake. Because their actions didn't speak, didn't line up with their words. And our actions need to speak and be inconsistent with our words. You know, if you're going to claim and proclaim, then walk in what you claim and proclaim. If you're going to say you're X, Y, and Z, then act like you're X, Y, and Z. Now, let me just say that if, you, if this is you and, and I'm, you know, this is hitting home for you, don't be discouraged. Don't, don't leave the church and say, well, I'm, I'm just flaky. I, I don't belong. God, God works with us in different ways or in different seasons. So maybe right now you're, the, you're like that flaky Plymouth over there. But just keep on. Keep on serving God. Keep on coming to church. I, I, I want you to be here. I hope you're here. I, I don't want to see you go because you think I'm creating or, or talking about this certain standard. Yes, we need to reach for that. But it doesn't mean that we need to be that in order to be here at church and to be serving God. Some of you just are still working out your salvation. And that's okay. Um, but don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. You keep on coming. You keep on doing what you've been doing, but start to change. Amen? Start asking the Lord to change you. We could fool people with our words, but we can't fool them with our actions. You may be able to try to fool God with your words, but you're not going to fool them with your heart. He knows your heart. Make a commitment to the Lord. This morning, make a commitment to the Lord that your yeses will be a yes and your noes will be noes. Just, just today, just say, you know what, God? I am tired of being flaky. I'm tired of, of living in a way that's not... Let me, let, me, let me say this. The Bible says that the double-minded man... Is what? Unstable in what? All his ways. The double-minded man, that means 
the man that says yes, but really means no, or says no and his actions are yes, the double-minded man, says they will be unstable in all your ways. In other words, it's going to be hard for you to keep a job. It's going to be hard for you to keep solid relationships. It's going to be hard for you because you're double-minded. You're, you're one way, one way, uh, one day, and another way the next day. So we've got to be, we, we've got to ask the Lord, God, change us. Mold us and shape us to be a man and woman of my word. And for my yeses to be my yeses and my noes to be noes. And you, we need to, this morning, not only do that, but um, we need to Give them our entire heart. Because that's what it's all about. That's what it comes down to is our heart. Uh, like Jesus was saying you, to the Pharisees, they give them lip service, but their heart was far from them. Well, we need to ask the Lord to change our heart, to come into our heart, to fully take over our heart. That's, that's what it comes down to. And when we do that, when we do that, God will make us more dependable. There's, I've, I've known people. I mean, maybe perhaps I could even speak for this myself. I remember my, my family telling me, my brother and my sister-in-law in particular, a long time ago, saying, we, we thought you'll never get a job. We thought you'll never have work ethic. We thought, woo, 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 woo. We thought you were going to be flaky. We thought you were going to be in prison. We thought you were going to be dead. We thought you were going to be gang forever. We thought you were going to be drug addict for Woo, 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 right? This is my sister and my sister-in-law and my brother telling me this. I, I was a teenager then. But I am telling you, it's because I gave my heart totally over to the Lord that he began to impart things into me where I could become a good worker, where I could become drug-free, where I could become a man of my word um, and be a good father. Come on. Come on. We can't be double-minded with our children. We have to be stable and strong and let our roots go down deep for our children. Come on. And God could do it. He could bring this to you that you perhaps never thought you could. He could bring you to be the best parent way beyond what your parents. Now, my mom's not here, so I could throw her under the bus. <laughs> she was here, I think, a couple weeks ago. I was, I, I was about to throw her under the bus. Oh, my, she's here. And I, I decided, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But my mom, I guess I'm not kidding. My mom, uh, they did the best they could, her and my dad. My dad left us when I was not even one years old yet. And think about that. My mom, she don't like when I say this, so, but if she's watching, hey. She was on welfare. She was on welfare. We grew up on the east side of San Jose, which is the worst part of San Jose. Gang infested, drug infested, and she did the best she could. Oh, man, my mom's an awesome woman. She loves the Lord, and she gave her heart completely to the Lord, and God began to change. But let me tell you something. When I was, I have, that's my example. Welfare, and my dad left us. Now, I've been married 25 years. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm not on drugs, haven't taken a drug since I was 13 years old. And I'm, I believe I'm, I'm not the perfect father, but I believe I'm a good father to my children. And, and all because, not because I had a good example. Not because, I'm pointing there because that's where my mom was sitting. Maybe she's watching. <laughs> not because, my daughter's watching right now, by the way, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, what's up? She told me this morning, she doesn't watch. She, she, I don't know why she didn't go to church. You better go to church. Anyways. Um, but she says, Dad, I'm going to watch you this morning. But I know she would vouch her that, that I'm, I've been a good father to her. And I say that not boastfully. I say that humbly. And thank you. I mean, I say that so much with gratefulness to the Lord. Because it's not because I had a good example. It's because the Lord came into my heart and I gave him all of my heart. I gave him all of my heart, and I've served him with all of my heart. And because of that, he instilled in me parental instincts. He's given me wisdom for my kids. Now, 
I, I tell my kids, I've been telling my kids, I've been coaching them because they're at the dating age now. They're not dating, but they're fixing to. And I tell them, I tell them, I said, you, you, you got a, a girlfriend, boyfriend, or, or person of interest that, and listen, Victor Lauren, I'm going to tell you again. And my son's back there. He ain't going to raise his head. He's acting like he's not listening. But I'm going to tell you guys that if you allow your heart to go to somebody and they're tore up from the floor up or watch this, if they're all lip service, you're going to have problems and issues. And you know what? Not only, and I was telling my, wife, my daughter this this morning, I said, not only are you going to have issues, but we're going to have issues. You're bringing that to the whole family. So don't allow your heart to just to go to anybody. Understand, set up standards before you even allow emotionally for you to be attached to that person. Because once you get attached, then it's that much harder to break. So before you even start, understand and realize you've got to look at their, their parents and how their relationship is. You've got to look at how their spiritual walk is. Examine that. If this is a, before you give your heart to them. You guys understand? Because it's much easier to back out and to back away from that before you give your heart and you're emotionally entangled with them. Now, if you already given your heart and you're already there and you're going to get married, then you better make it work because you get married one time. I tell my kids one time, one time, you're not, you're not going to, you know, this, this is not a car lot. You don't go and, and take a test drive. You stay solid. You go in there. This is for the rest of our lives. Now, I know many of you have come from families that have multiple marriages and maybe perhaps you, and this is not to make you feel condemned anyway. This, this is to encourage you. I, I, I told a, a couple just recently that are going to go on their second marriage, and I told them this is forever. God has forgiven you, and we talked about that. God has forgiven you for what your mistakes you've made, but from here on forward, there's no more of that. You ain't going to go, go in and then think about going out. You're in. You're in. But God has given me wisdom, parental wisdom. Hopefully my kids listen to me because it says, the Bible says that if your parent, your kid's life can make you miserable. Your, your kids, the way they act, the way they, the choice they make, the decisions they make could either make you miserable and hostile and just hurt for everybody or it can make be a blessing to you a blessing to you your kids lives could be just peaceful and prosperous for you and your family i mean i can't wait till i have so many grandchildren i'm like just big old you know stomach and just chilling no <laughs> not the stomach part but chilling part you know just chilling you know, taking my kids to Dis my grandkids somewhere to the park or to Disneyland. I can't wait. But, but if it's all dysfunctional, if it's all tore up from the floor up, I'm not going to be able to enjoy that the way I would if everything's healthy and they, have a, uh, they love the Lord. But it's all because, I, okay, I, I know I'm ramping a little bit here. But, uh, but I'm, I'm talking to my daughter. I, if I, you know, you want to hear that? I'm talking to my daughter and my son back there. My two kids back there who don't acting like they're not listening to me. They're looking at their phones. Oh, they hear me. They hear me. Kelly's laughing because she knows my kids from way back when. But uh, guys, all right. So let's all stand for a moment. Let's all stand. We're going to dismiss right now. Uh, man, let's be men and women of our word. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to allow us, to teach us, to train us to be that way. From here on forward, church, from here on forward, from here on forward. And then not only let's ask the Lord of that, but let's ask the Lord to change our heart. And we, we commit our heart to him, not be about lip service no more, ever. Let's not be about lip service, people of lip service. Let's give the Lord our entire heart and our desires and our emotions and even our shortcomings. Let's give that all to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you and we, we come to you humbly.
naked, Father, in, in the spiritual sense, Father, and, and just say, Father, we, 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 some of us in here are just so far from this message. God, but I pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you, you would change our hearts, change our minds, change our, our, our characteristics, our, that what we do, that what we don't do, Father. Change it, Father, so that we could become men and women of God, men and women of our word, so that we don't be flaky no more, so that we don't say yes and we mean no, or say no and mean yes, Father, that we won't be double-minded anymore. We won't be like a wave tossed to and fro anymore, Father. We would be strong. We will be people who will stand up. We will be, when we make a commitment, we'll keep that commitment, God. When we give someone our word, we'll keep that word. Our word will be our bond. We don't need a contract because we'll be so solid in, in what we say and what we do and how we act, Father. I pray that our actions will line up with our words, that we won't just shoot from the hip to the lip, but, Father, our words, our hearts will be truly committed to you, Father. Come on, we commit your heart right now to the Lord. Hallelujah. Commit your heart to the Lord right now as they sing the song. dismissing right now in a moment just we dismissing a couple minutes Father, I pray, God, you would give us, like I said, the heart of a warrior, the heart of a lion. Father, I pray, God, that you would give us where our words will be solid, Father, and our hearts will be totally out to you, Father. I thank you so much, Father, for your word, and I pray that we will apply it to our lives. Change us, mold us, shape us, Father, into who you want us to be, not who we think we need to be or who we think we should be, but who you want us to be to be shape us mold us teach us god guide us in jesus name we pray amen amen come on give the lord a big hand yes amen you may be seated one second one second we're going to dismiss right now just before we do i just want to tell you don't forget the mother's day flyer if we could get some guys back there to have one mother's day flyer to give one mother's day flyer to every single person also have the uh outreach flyer the the event we're going to do downtown if you guys don't forget take those outreach flyers and the event flyers all right god bless you guys thank you so much for coming thank you for the, being here and be patient with the baby dedication we'll see you guys online god bless you guys we'll see you sunday amen